Welcome back to our Fun in the Sun project with the Southeastern Quilt and Textile Museum and myself, your stitching host, Laura Bosma, Pretty Penny Precuts. This is the fourth project and we're probably about a third of the way through it. And that was uh, when I left off with you, that was steps one through four where we um, got all the way through design satisfaction, meaning you had set all your motifs with the fusible removed onto the sand background and you were ready for step five. So here we are at step five where we're pressing or steam pressing the motifs permanently in place. So again, here's the finished project. And as I stated, it's gotten pretty big. It's actually almost too big for our field of vision. So that's why I've got the original one folded a little bit. And then here's where we left off with uh, the motifs down. Again, design satisfaction is important for you to walk away. Make sure that it's placed correctly before you do permanently steam fuse it in place. And this is an extremely important step. We have used a product called Light Steamacine 2 Fusible. It is tacky, sticky as a design property, meaning you can place the motifs, you can move them and remove them, and they're not permanent until you steam fuse them down and the steam is key especially when using wool. Wool loves steam. It's probably the best way to iron it or press it in our case and that's what we're going to do here. So off camera I've pretty much steam fused mine down leaving just this portion right here that I'm going to do with you. You do need a really good steam iron, one that has a ton of holes. Um, you may not have a good steam iron, no problem. I end up most of the time, honestly, using a dry iron and a source of water. If you um, purchase the Floss and Notions kit, then you can see I've been using mine. You got a piece of muslin to use as a press cloth. Uh, for this project, you may want to get a bigger one. Maybe you've got something at home, a piece of cotton or a piece of 100% linen that you could use that is still a little bit see-through so you kind of know where you're at. Note that I did mark it this side up and that's on purpose. Uh, remember, we've got fusible behind these. It doesn't often migrate around the edges onto your iron or onto your press cloth, but if it did, it would always only be be on this side, leaving this side pristine or clear of fusible so that when you add your iron to it, you're not putting the sticky stuff on the bottom of the iron. So um, literally, I use a very low tech approach. I've got a press cloth. See, I wadded it up. I've got a cup of water. I'm going to go off a little bit so I don't drown it, uh, drown my tortoise or my sea turtle. Can you tell I grew up in California with tortoises? I've misspoke many times, but I really did. I happen to know quite a lot about them because unfortunately people take them out of their natural habitat. And so I have misspoke, but anyway, we really are talking about a sea turtle. Um, and I have wetted it. Now you can see that it took water on pretty good and where you see it white it didn't take water on very good which means it needed to soak a little bit more in interest of time i'm just going to move on i know it's plenty wet right here you can see yeah, the change of color and that's the portion that i'm going to lay over this shoulder here which is what i want to show you as far as steam fusing um, I have it clearly written in your directions. Plus again, uh, when you received your kit, I put in a couple of Notion fact sheets and talking about how to steam the light steam seam 2 fusible was one of those Notion fact sheets. It is really, really important. Um, the directions, which I didn't give you for uh, uh, light steam seam 2 are written for cotton quilting or applique projects, not written for wool, and I need you to do it a little differently. So that's why I have written my own directions. But you've got a dampened surface, or you've taken a spray bottle and you've dampened the surface by spraying 
trying to simulate spraying here with my finger. Uh, somehow you've gotten this pretty wet. In my directions, I say nearly dripping. I do squeeze it out, but it is wet. Then I'm gonna take a dry iron, and I do happen to have this little travel iron. I don't use it as a steam iron. I don't bother to put water in it. I just wet my press cloth. And then I'm gonna lay down. It's important for those of you that are new to us for starting project four as your first project here, that pressing means up and down. It doesn't mean ironing, which is scrubbing back and forth. Again, pressing is up and down, uh, not scrubbing. The reason we don't scrub uh, with either a, a quilting project or an applique project, we don't want to distort the pieces, meaning stretch them out, and we don't want to move them. All right, so then you're going to iron until it's dry. We already know what the dry press cloth looks like because it's white. It's not this beigey color. So you will iron literally until the press cloth is dry. And it looks like I'm scrubbing, but I'm literally just, just microscopically lifting that iron up before I move it over. So once you have pressed that until it is dry, you can remove the press cloth and then let that come back, I ironed here, or I pressed here, let that come back to just about room temperature for me. And again, that's critical. Uh, count seconds on how many seconds it took to get to a dry press cloth. It's probably closer to seven to 10 seconds. And that's how long you would steam in place over the press cloth, please, um, if you had a legitimate, well-working steam iron. So I hope that was instructive. Now we've overlapped motifs here around the apron of the um, sea turtle. And we've also overlapped motifs here, the two eyes, meaning instead of having just one, two layers, we've got one, two is the head, three is the eye. Where stuff is overlapped, I do quite literally want you to turn it over. I don't know if you can shadow through and see that the applique is now on the back. I know it's not moving because I've steam pressed it already, but where I've got uh, stacked motifs, I want you to, to dampen or pick the wet part of that cloth back up. For example, I'm gonna just hit this shoulder part right here, and I want you to repeat it again. I want you to literally steam press. I'm just gonna move in a little bit so that you can see. Steam press until you've got the uh, press cloth dry, and you have literally steam fused both sides. Now, why did we go to all that effort? We went to all that effort of steam fusing so that you can now, um, you want to stop that sticky fusible, meaning you've got to change its properties from being sticky fusible to just fusible to hold your motifs down. As you're stitching, if you're finding that you're getting a lot of residue on your needle, it truly isn't a problem. But you'll note to yourself, I probably didn't steam fuse enough go do it again. If a motif lifts up, meaning if it falls off or starts to come loose, go fuse it again. The beauty of the light steam is seen too fusible. Another property of it is you can't wear it out. You cannot overpress it. The only caution I'll ever give you is if you are steam fusing what the industry calls white wool, which is basically an off-white wool, it may have a tendency because of the chemicals they've used to try to get it as white as possible to um, burn or scorch. So be careful when you're working with just white or off-white wool, but all the hand dyes, all the textures that are beautifully yarn dyed colors, you should have absolutely no um, problem with it. So just to repeat myself one more time, I need you to steam fuse the heck out of this thing. Every single portion of it, move all the way around, steam fuse the top, turn it over, steam fuse the back, seven to 10 seconds in each area. Keep that press cloth, if it gets dried out, you wet it again and steam fuse and steam fuse and steam fuse. You cannot hurt the product product by what the industry would say over ironing. Most fusibles you can, meaning they just stop working. They kind of turn like plastic and stop working. This one will not do that. It'll just go down even better. So that gets us past step five, which was to permanently steam fuse motifs in place. 
So happy steaming. I do want you to let it cool back down to uh, completely to room temperature before we go on preparing to do the stitching. We'll see you in the next segment.